Tutorial 2 MoMini's Studio Interface In this lesson, we will briefly discuss the MoMini's Studio Interface. By the end of the tutorial, you should become familiar with most of the studio's dialogues and controls. Before I begin, I would like to note that improvements are constantly being made to the user interface, so you may notice that the version you are using is a bit different from the one presented here. Let's begin. Let's start at the top with a ribbon and quick launch bar. The ribbon is made up of three categories, home, community, and help. We will briefly cover each. The home category, appearing on the left, contains common operations useful in various areas of the studio. This includes the standard edit operations, cut, copy, and paste. These are used for duplicating and reusing objects around the studio. The Undo and Redo buttons are part of the studio's multi-level undo mechanism, which, in my opinion, is one of the most essential tools of a powerful editor. There's nothing I hate more than accidentally deleting something, only to discover it cannot be undone. Next, we have the Game category. This allows for the insertion of various studio objects. We will go into more details about these later on. The Porting Profiles category contains the Profiles Manager, where you can customize the target profiles of the game, and the Design Resolution. The Build category contains the Play button that launches the simulator, the Test button that launches the simulator with performance graphs, and the Get to Mobile button that launches the Get to Mobile online service. The Tools category includes the Export Images tool to save the images in your game somewhere on your computer, the Image Analyzer that keeps track of the memory consumed by images in the game, and the Performance Screen that displays the performance graphs that are also available in the simulator's test mode. The View category allows basic customization of the working environment. The Localization category enables importing and exporting translation files. And last but not least, the Other category that contains advanced features. Find is used to search the game document for keywords. Import enables the importing of game objects and assets from another project. Font Manager helps to manage the supported fonts in the project. Game Properties is where game developers can specify the game and author names, supply a short description, and configure a few other properties of the game. Moving over to the Community tab, we surprisingly have the community features of the studio. This tab includes nearly all the studio's external interaction features. Last but not least is the Help tab. As you may have guessed, this enables access to the help file. We have put a great deal of effort into making the help very easily accessible from anywhere in the studio in the form of contextual help. In other words, pressing F1 while working on a certain function of the studio will bring up the relevant help topic. I would personally recommend using it whenever you encounter an unfamiliar concept in the studio. In addition, you have access from this tab to the video tutorials and sample games. Located right above the ribbon is the Quick Launch Bar. This toolbar enables quick access to often used features. Items may be removed by right-clicking them and selecting Remove. Similarly, items may be added by right-clicking in the ribbon area and selecting Add. At the top left corner, Starring our mascot Mo is the studio's main menu. This is where projects may be loaded and saved. For purposes of this tutorial, we will open an existing project which we created in Tutorial 1 called MoFish1. The studio creates and uses folders that contain all the files in the project. Looking at the left side of the studio, we find the Game Objects tree. This is where all objects of the game are managed. The most basic and commonly used object type is the sprite. This file contains a fish sprite in the objects list. Nearly all game entities you can think of are sprites. A platform hero, 
platforms, enemies, enemy bullets, and clouds are just a few examples of sprites. The game object toolbox is where all of these are added, accessed, and edited. Rooms are also managed using the game objects tree. Rooms can be thought of as levels or stages of the game. As you can see in our example, the game contains two rooms. Main menu with an M in the room's icon and room 1. The second room, room 1, is the first actual room of the game and where the first stage should be constructed. Rooms may be added, removed, and edited using the context menu. In addition, they may be reordered by dragging them around. The other branches are capabilities, controllers, badges, paths, products, and tags. All of these share advanced concepts that we will not get into in this tutorial. Right under the global variables list at the right is the properties grid. It's currently empty. We will demonstrate its usefulness in future tutorials. Positioned at the bottom of the screen are three lists which we'll discuss briefly. The error list, find results, and output. The error list should be viewed from time to time and its purpose is to warn the game developer about an invalid state of the game. Double-clicking an error will jump to the source of the error, although we will not demonstrate that here. The Find Results tab displays the results of a find operation in the studio. Various items in the game, such as sprites and properties, support searching for all locations where they are used. The results of such an operation are displayed in this list. Lastly, the Output view is used for some basic debugging using the simulator and will be explained in future tutorials. Now that we have gone over most of the studio's basic interface, let's put it to use to get a better feel for it. We will start by going over to the Rooms list and double-clicking Room 1. We now have the first room open in the Room Designer. Near the center of the room is a single fish instance. Let's select it. Now let's press the Copy button on the ribbon. Let's press the Paste button to have another copy. Using the mouse, we can drag our new instance to a new place on the screen. Let's repeat the process and create another copy. Now let's demonstrate the use of the Undo capabilities. Click the Undo button four times. Notice that clicking the Undo button reverts the room to its previous state. Clicking the Redo button four times results in our three fish instances being displayed again. It is now time for us to check our little game. Let's press the Play button on the ribbon. This will bring up the simulator. As you can see, we are currently viewing the menu level. Let's press the right arrow at the top to move to our room, and here we have our three little fish swimming happily. This is the end of the interface tutorial. I hope you enjoyed watching. See you again in future tutorials.